Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I'm good, Brian. Let's get to it. Let's get to the Breeders' Cup coverage in earnest. No fooling around today, Matt. Hey, what we're doing today, we're having fun with the show. Obviously, we don't know the fields yet. Those uh, pre-entries are due next week, folks. But we do have a good idea. The main principles in all 14 Breeders' Cup races. So what Matt and I are going to do is we're going to run down all 14 Breeders' Cup races coming on Friday and Saturday, November 4 and 5 at Keeneland. And we're going to give you our most likely winner. We're not looking at post position draws, obviously, at this time. We're not thinking about odds so much at this time. We're just talking about the horses we think most likely to win. Without further ado, Matt, let's jump in. We're going to go with the juveniles, the two-year-olds first. We're going to start with the juvenile turf sprint and i see we have two different horses here matt and i think yours is actually a horse that could be a long shot come breeders cup yeah maybe and and uh, i think it was uh, we got a couple of pretty interesting horses in here brian uh, especially uh especially yours that you'll talk about in a minute but american apple had a very impressive uh victory the just the other day at uh, the Belmont at, at the big a meeting um, in the matron um, now has back-to-back -back victories want broke uh, broke her maiden at uh, Kentucky Downs impressively and came back with another impressive victory um, ran a good time. Again, this is a race that, you know, in my eyes could be pretty wide open. We don't know the field. We're trying to give you horses that you can start thinking about in the next few weeks. All right, Matt. Uh, first off, folks, don't be scared off by the Phillies. This is a race certainly where the Phillies can compete and win against the males. Matt, where were her odds in the matron? Do you remember? Ooh, Brian, I don't. 47 to 1. She she was a bomb in the matron, but it was a very good performance. She proved to herself after that win at Kentucky Downs. I, on the other hand, went with uh, probably a horse who could well be favored. We don't know the Europeans necessarily coming in for this yet, uh, but the Americans have a good shot usually in a juvenile turf sprint. Speedboat Beach has been excellent in two starts. I, I'm not necessarily one who's always picking Bob Bafferts, but I think this son of Bayern, Matt, has been terrific. One start on dirt. They probably wanted to steer him clear of Cave Rock, so they tried him on turf. They thought he'd like the turf, and he looked good running very, very fast again, winning the speakeasy. So for me, Speedboat Beach is the horse to beat right now in that race. Next on our list, Matt, uh, I think it's one of the more wide open. Yeah, there's a bunch of wide open races, but the Juvenile Phillies looks pretty wide open to me in that there's not a clear cut horse to beat. You might be on the favorite here with your most likely winner in Chocolate Galato. Yeah, I might be, uh, uh, Brian. Um, winner, uh, winner in New York, Todd Pletcher, uh, Mike Rapoli. I don't know, Brian. Heading into the Breeders' Cup, I don't think I remember the Pletcher barn being hotter than any other year he he recently has been winning races uh not just in new york in kentucky breeders cup winning your in races uh he's got one of the strongest hands that he's had uh in in many years and that includes uh chocolate gelato um who uh is the recent winner of the frisette after winning a maiden special weight at Saratoga, finished third in her first start, which, uh, you know, uh, um, we we get so accustomed to Baffert horses winning first time out, but that wasn't the case with Chalka Gelato. But, boy, she's looked really, really good in those last two starts. Yeah, Pletcher has a good one here in Chocolate Gelato. I like Chocolate Gelato too, Matt, uh, both the, the dessert and the horse. She's a likely favorite off that Frisette win. She's been very good. I do wonder about two turns for the first time going out to Keeneland. I think that could be a stumbling block for the potential favorite there. I went with Chop Chop, and Chop Chop might be a horse that uh, will have a little bit more odds here. This is a Brad Cox trainee. Matt, she's a daughter of City of Light. She has some turf breeding throughout her pedigree, but she's a daughter of City of, of Light who won her first two starts on the turf at Alice Park and Kentucky Downs, a stakes win 
at Kentucky Downs. And I kind of thought she was best in that recent also also the 80s uh, at Keeneland, the grade one race where she uh, just missed and had that kind of a poor start. She also uh, was bumped a little bit late in there, just missed in the also the 80s. I think Chop Chop has a big shot in the juvenile fillies. We're going to go on to the juvenile fillies turf next, Matt. And I think I think you're on to the horse to beat here. Yeah, I think I'm going, uh, you know, now that we're uh, going to the turf, um, it's time to start thinking about the uh, Europeans. Although with the juvenile fillies turf in recent years, the American horses have done really, really well uh, in, in that particular turf event. But that doesn't mean that that's going to, to be the case this year. Yeah, I like uh, Blue Rose Sen, I guess, um, is how we would pronounce it. Um, a winner in France, most recently a winner at Longchamp, has four wins already in France from the barn of Christine Head. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I actually think it's Christopher Head this time, ah. Matt, but, I, but I'm not 100% sure on that. The uh, Head family, of course, known very well in these Breeders' Cup. Uh, uh, riding and straining, Freddie Head was a, a master. Goldakova, of course, Miesk before her. Blue Rose Sand looks full of class over in Europe, and it looks like they want to follow in the, the Head tradition, bringing this really good filly over. She's the horse to beat. You have said that uh, American fillies, though, have had success in here. I, I'm looking at uh, uh, another horse probably with a little bit of odds here. Her name is, and I'm not sure about the pronunciation easier, Zigjira. Zigjira is uh, a, a trained by uh, Phil Bauer, and she's a daughter of Nyquist. She ran her first two races at Saratoga. Uh, in her first race, she was a good second. She finished ahead of Delight, who was the re recent Jessamine winner at Keeneland. Then she came back with a big win on the turf at Saratoga. Last time she ran a very good race when switching to the dirt, much like Chop Chop. I think we'll see her back on turf, though, after the fourth. Uh, last time in the Alsa v 80s, uh, Zizura is my most likely winner of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. Next, Matt, I was a little surprised to see who you had as your most likely winner of the Juvenile because it's not the big favorite. No, it's not, Brian. Uh, hey, look, uh, um, I'm just giving the Horse Center fans something else to think about in here. Um, the the Your pick, Brian, is likely to be one of the heaviest favorites of both days um, uh, at the World Championships, and why not? You'll talk a little bit more about it. I'm going to go with the East Coast uh, horse, Todd Pletcher. I'm going to go with Forte. Um giving you Horse Center fans a little bit of East Coast, West Coast matchup uh, to think about. Uh, um, uh, uh, Forte, of course, um, uh, was the recent winner of the Breeders' Futurity and the winner of the Hopeful. I had questions about Forte heading into the Breeders' Futurity, if you remember that show. But, hey, that horse answered those questions for me. Yeah, he sure did. Uh, the Breeders' Futurity on the same uh, track, same distance as the Breeders' Cup Juvenile will be. He looked good, as did the horse that he battled down the stretch with Loggins. I think both of those horses are for real, Loggins and Forte. But I couldn't look anywhere else but Cave Rock. The, the son of Arrogate has been absolutely terrific in all three starts. He's already a two-time great uh, one winner out in California. But he's dominated. Not only does he have a high turn of speed, but he looks like he's just cruising out there on that uh, that that lead or, or being right there early. I think Cave Rock is for real, and I think Cave Rock is, unfortunately, at low odds, like you said, not a very likely winner on Breeders' Cup Day, Breeders' Cup Juvenile Day on Friday. Next, we go to the juvenile turf, and uh, I, I think we've been convinced in recent years, Matt, by what uh, trainer Charlie Appleby has been doing. Of course, he won this race last year with modern games and uh it's just a matter of which appleby we're talking about here when we're giving out our most likely winner for the juvenile turf yeah brian i think uh right now uh, charlie appleby is an irresistible force uh in the breeders cup if he can continue what he's been doing for the 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 the, the past few years and, and not just winning 
big races at, in the Breeders' Cup, winning races, big races in Canada, in New York. Uh, um, he 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 sends them over. Seems to know which horses to send. Knows how to prepare them. Does uh, does everything right. I am going with a uh, Charlie Appleby. I am going with Mysterious Knight, who is the recent winner of the Summer Stakes up at Woodbine and is also the winner of a Group 3 at Deauville in France. Yeah, and if you watch that Summer Stakes at Woodbine, that was most impressive. I, I don't think he beat a, a really good field in that grade one race up at Woodbine last time, but it was just an explosive mood by Miss moved by Mysterious Knight, and Mysterious Knight certainly is a horse with a big shot. Much like last year in this race, it looks like uh, it could come down to the two Appleby horses. I'm assuming Silver Knot is going to come over again, uh, Silver or come over for Appleby again. Silver Knot, uh, no doubt in my mind, Silver Knot has been the better horse of the two over in Europe. He's got three wins, two group, group three wins. He's been running great over there. He's been a mile already. I like Silver Knot better than Mysterious Knight on European form, but uh, hey, that race in Woodbine was huge for Mysterious Knight. Makes me think that uh, Knott might be onto something with his most likely winner in the juvenile turn. Knott, we're going to go from Friday to Saturday. We're moving right along here. Next on our list, we're going to stick with the turf races. So the turf races will come first. Let's do the four turf races on Saturday. We're going to start with the turf sprint. And we are in agreement here, sir. Yeah, we got Golden Pal, uh, um, and Golden Pal has been absolutely terrific this year, except for a trip over to Royal Ascot for uh, uh, for Wesley Ward. Um, Golden Pal won the Woodford and won the Troy at uh, Saratoga this year and of course was the winner of this race last year so uh golden pal is one of those horses that we'll be looking at a little bit today and and in future shows thinking about whether they can defend their championships yeah and there's a chance that a really good uh, uh european sprinter highfield princess comes over and and that would be quite a matchup in the breeders cup uh turf sprint golden pal of course is the american he's eight for eight, Matt, on American turf. Uh, never lost a race on the grass in America. Maybe more importantly for this, he's four for four at Keeneland. That, that's really his home for trainer Wesley Ward, uh, son of Uncle Mo and Lady Shipman, of course, been terrific with that speed. I don't know if he's as good as he once was as a four-year-old. That Ascot race was his first really bad race, and maybe he hasn't decimated fields this year over here like he has in the past but he's still just a monster especially on the keeneland turf i couldn't look anywhere else um breeders cup winner two years ago in the juvenile turf sprint breeders cup winner turf sprint last year he'll be looking for a third straight breeders cup win that's a pretty special accomplishment if he can do it let me get to the right page here we're saturday turf philly and mare turf matt second time in a row we're in agreement. let's talk about nashua yeah, let's talk about Nashua. Uh, um, not Charlie Appleby this time. It's uh, John Gosden, and and John Gosden has a pretty darn good record uh, over many, many, many years of sending horses to the the Breeders' Cup. Nashua um, got a bunch of Group One wins uh, on her resume: a Group One at Goodwood, a Group One. At, in France at Chanty and most recently was second in a group one at Longchamp, a, 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 a veteran with a fantastic record. Yeah, yeah. She's arguably the best thrill fill in Europe. I mean, there, there, there's others in the conversation, but she's certainly one of the best thrill fillies in Europe. John Gosden, as Matt said, has been uh, a big time in Breeders' Cup races for going on the last four decades now, whether he was based in Southern California or back in his home of England. Gazden brings over horses that are ready to win. And Nashua looks like the type. I also feel like Matt, she's, uh, you know, she ran in four straight group one races over there. She she was beaten last time. Uh, uh, it was a good performance, but I think, uh, I think, and she was beaten in the Epson Oaks earlier this year at a mile and a half. But I think this will be a really good spot for a mile three sixteenths which uh, is not best for all of the best Americans. We'll get some good Europeans coming over, but assuming Nashua comes over, 
I think that three-year-old filly for John Gosden, daughter of Frankel, is the one to beat there. Uh, three races in a row, Matt. What's going on? Our most likely winner in the Breeders' Cup mile is Modern Games. No surprise there. No surprise there, Brian. That's for sure. Uh, uh, Modern Games is one of those horses that will have a chance of – uh, he's not going to be defending his championship, but he has a chance of winning two years in a row. Uh, uh, he won that, you know, controversial uh, Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf yes, last year, but he did it so impressively. And, and most recently, uh, uh, Charlie Appleby brought him over to win the uh, Woodbine Mile. And, and you talked about an impressive turn of foot from uh, – and Appleby runner earlier, this guy had one in that Woodbine mile. Yeah, he was uh, much like Mysterious Night. He was so impressive up there in Woodbine in that uh, Woodbine mile, beating good milers. Uh, I, I think he stands over the Americans as uh, just a little bit more talented. You know, the best turf horses in Europe are better than the best turf horses in America. Nine out of ten times in modern games fits that bill. An impressive winner of the juvenile turf, as Matt said last year, uh, he's a Group 1 winner in both uh, uh, France and Canada this year for trainer Charlie Appleby. Looks like he's going to run uh, at Ascot uh, this weekend. So uh, he'll come back on short rest, but we expect him here for the Breeders' Cup mile and uh, certainly the horse to beat, provided he is here and healthy in just over three weeks. Matt, finally, we have a disagreement, uh, a disagreement on Saturday turf races. Uh, uh, it's sort of a disagreement, though, because, again, there's that guy again. Who's your pick in the Breeders' Cup turf right now? I'm going back with Charlie Appleby, and I'm going with uh, Rebels Romance, who is riding a uh, four-race uh, winning streak, which includes two Group 1 races in Germany and a uh, couple of group races in uh, Great Britain. Yeah, Rebels Romance is has been a terrific horse for a while now. Um, I actually wrote about this horse as a Kentucky Derby contender. He never made it over for the Kentucky Derby, but he was a nice dirt horse uh, way back when at Maidan, or, or just a few years ago at Maidan, and he's become a really, developed into a really nice turf horse uh, for trainer Charlie Appleby. However, I don't think he's Charlie Appleby's best uh, older turf horse going a distance. I think that would be a, a day are, and Adair is, uh, you know, he, he he was the Epsom Derby winner of last year. He was the King George Queen Elizabeth winner of last year. He was off for a long time, but he came back recently with a nice, impressive win. He's looking at big races here in the fall, so I think he'll be running on Champions Day at Ascot as well. But look for him to also come back on short rest after that race, only a second race of the year to run in the Breeders' Cup turf. Either one of these Appleby horses, much like the juvenile turf, uh, we were talking about could win. Matt's pick certainly is a good one, but uh, I like it there just a little bit better. Uh, although he's only had one race back in recent uh, in recent uh, in recent time here. All right, Matt, we're going to go with Saturday. The, the maybe the biggest races on Saturday in American racing. These dirt races. We're going to start with the Philly and Mare Sprint. Neither of us are on the favorite, or, or maybe the few favorites. Uh, um, you know, Olive Goodnight and uh, Echo Zulu and maybe even Slam. There, there's a lot of horses who could be be below, bet below our top choice. But we're both on the defending champion in here. Yeah, I kind of defaulted to the the defending champion, Brian. Um, I have so much respect for, <coughs> excuse me, for trainer uh, Mike McCarthy, who just so quietly and classy uh, way about him of uh, preparing horses. He's done well uh, in the Breeders' Cup with victories, obviously, with uh, Say Say last year and victory in the um, the Dirt Mile with City of Light also. Um, this is a race that uh, I consider to be pretty darn wide open. Yeah, uh, TC could defend her championship, but again, it could be a bomb. Yeah, it could be. This this is a race that's produced some uh, odds over the years. It's produced some favorites. Last year, CC was a six to one winner when everybody, of course, was on uh, a Camine in last year's Philly Mare Sprint. But I, I just think CC is a perfect horse for this race. Seven furlongs is her perfect distance where she can kind of 
come from mid pack or a little bit closer to the pace, uh, depending on how much speed there is. And I think CC seven furlongs is her game. This race should set up for her again. She throws in a, a clunker every once in a while, but she proved that she's uh, back on track last time, much like last year with a big win in the uh, Chillingworth out in California. So CC, we're in agreement there. We go to the males, Matt, and I need to see who's in this race because yeah. Jack Christopher is a real wild card in my eyes, Matt. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure which race Jack Christopher is going to end up. And you can see that in our picks the next two races. We both love Jack Christopher, but is he going to sprint or is he going to go on the dirt mile? I don't know, Brian. You know, that certainly is an intriguing question. Um, frankly, uh, I have I don't have any insight about what race he's going to go into, but I would prefer to see Jack Christopher uh, in the sprint, although it's six furlongs. If it was seven furlongs, I'd like it a little bit more. I I, I I think that Jack Christopher is best as a one-turn horse, and the Dirt Mile this year is a two-turn configuration. Um, I think the matchup between Jack Christopher and Jackie's Warrior would just be tremendously exciting, and I think that uh, Jack Christopher would have a big chance of winning the race. Yeah, and um, if I had a good, strong feeling, Ch Chad Brown often does this. He plays things close to the vest. If I had a good, strong feeling that Jack Christopher was going to be in the sprint, uh, I'd have to think long and hard about him as my top pick in the sprint as well. I think he's that good, and I agree with you, one turn. But one one mile at Keeneland, I, I think Jack Christopher is going to be just fine in there. We've seen him. Uh, run good races out a mile before the Pathé mile, the Champagne, for instance. Uh, the uh, the Haskell, you know, he was beaten pretty narrowly by uh, uh, Cyber Knife and tied by nine furlongs. I think Jack Christopher can get the job done now with a little bit more experience at the dirt mile. So I just have a feeling he's going to go that way. But if he's in the sprint, he's tough. Jackie's warrior. I agree with most people that saying he's a vulnerable favorite in the Breeders' Cup sprint, but I, I can't look anywhere else uh, other than him as the horse to beat or the most likely winner in the sprint. He's been a terrific sprinter now, his whole career full of class. Uh, yes, he's vulnerable. Yes, he hasn't won a Breeders' Cup race as the favorite the last two years, but I still think he's the one to beat there. I've already talked about Jack Christopher in the dirt mile, Matt. I see you have a horse with a little bit more odds as your most likely winner of the British Cup Dirt Mile. Sure, and my pick is predicated on the on the on the thought that Jack Christopher would be going in the sprint. If, if that is not the case, uh, I agree that Jack Christopher, you know, it, is going to be tough in the Dirt Mile. But keeping in mind what I just said, uh, I wanted to give a little bit of a nod to Mind Control as a horse that is from the hot Todd Pletcher barn um, that, you know, even getting up there in years seems to be getting better and better. And I was so impressed with his victory uh, this summer in the Salvador Mile uh, when he beat Hot Rod Charlie, uh, a horse who, you know, uh, looked awfully good uh, recently. Yeah, mind control is is often uh, forgotten as one of America's best dirt milers, and and I agree with you. He's a shot. He's a horse that could certainly win this race. I think it's an interesting race, and again, we don't know if Jack Christopher will end up here, but uh, uh, Cody's Wish, uh, I, I think, would be another horse who has a big shot here. He's uh, streaking to say the least, and uh, of course, beat Jackie's Warrior in the seven furlong four go last time. Uh, Cyberknife, if Cyberknife ends up here, or some of those good three-year-olds, uh, Cyberknife's the first to come to mind. But uh, an, an interesting race. We'll have to see who ends up in the dirt mile and who doesn't. All right. Uh, a lot of people are really looking forward to the next race, Matt. That's the distaff. And again, it, the, the conversation starts with uh, that hot trainer you've been talking a lot about, and his name is Tom Fletcher. Yeah, Brian. Wow. Uh, uh... Uh, and wow about Todd Pletcher being hot, and wow about his two horses uh, and their and their recent performances last weekend prepping for the Breeders' Cup. Of course, we're talking about Ness 
the the marvelous three year old, and we're talking about Malathot, who both uh, um, were impressive winners. Nest uh, uh, is a horse who will put on a dazzling display down the stretch and win by big margins. And of course, uh, we saw Nest run so valiantly in the Belmont Stakes against the boys, which seemed to really kickstart uh, her career. And, and we saw Malathot, uh, uh, who is more of a, uh, you know, a grinded out down the stretch horse who isn't going to win by those big margins, but Hey, uh, uh, Throw in Clary Air, who's coming off of a you know a a, a difficult race uh, with problems in the gate, where she banged her head and really kind of lost all chance, and maybe a little bit forgotten. But I'm going with Nest. Yeah, yeah, and I agree with everything you said. I, I do agree with people that Nest and uh, Malathot are the two horses to beat. But it wasn't that long ago where people were saying Clary Air is the best older female in the country remember she beat malathot twice in a row so probably you can draw a line through that last race where matt said she she banged her head pretty good before the start of that race where malathot beat her and claria ran an uncharacteristically poor race she's a very consistent filly so that race was not the true claria i think claria will be forgotten just a little bit and we can't forget about that speedball society either who ran such a big race in the cotillion recently but uh I think Nest is better than the older horses. That's my opinion. I think she's better than Malathot. I think she's better than Clarier. Malathot three for three at Keeneland. Certainly that's something to think about. But on the other hand, Nest's grade one win in the Ashland was overpowering. I know it came on a wet fast track that day at Keeneland. But certainly I don't think Keeneland's going to be an issue for Nest. And when it comes down to it, I think Nest is this good. I would prefer Nest more. If the Breeders' Cup distaff now were at 10 furlongs, and 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 a lot of our listeners and viewers out there probably don't remember that the Breeders' Cup distaff years and years ago, it's been a long time, but it started out at 10 furlongs. And I think Nest would be really tough at 10 furlongs. At eight, uh, nine furlongs that this this uh, Breeders' Cup distaff is at, I, I think she's a little bit more beatable if Malathot and Clarier run their best race. But, but like you, I still like Nest. I, I think she's one of America's best horses. Speaking of America's best horses, Matt, I see we have a green. It's on the last one, the big one, the classic. It's all Flayla. Yep, yep. Five for five in his, uh, his interesting and impressive and, and, and brilliant uh, career. He will be the favorite of all favorites. Um, on this uh, Breeders' Cup weekend, it, it's hard to it, it's hard to look past uh, flight line, even though the 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 field of challengers uh, um, is shaping up pretty well. Of course, with life is good leading the leading the way, but uh, it's hard to see a way that uh, flight line is going to lose. Yeah, every horse is beatable, and flight line is beatable. Uh, Ten furlongs at Keeneland, you you never know. But uh, I I think he's truly a special horse, Matt, and and I I certainly am not going to insult anyone's intelligence here by putting another horse as the most likely winner. Flight line, I I just think is a monster. Uh, the sun atop it has just been awesome. You know, everybody's saying, well, the Pacific Classic was one race, but you look at all five races, and they're just, you know blow your mind kind of impressive flight line is that good I, I he's got that high cruising speed uh kind of like i said about cave rock i don't think he needs the lead i think he can sit second and then just pounce and i guess he did that in the met mile when he had a little trouble flight line will be tough to beat i i life is good has just not impressed me going nine furlongs or more especially recently i, I i'm not seeing a horse who's looks like he's ready to run a huge race on a mile and a quarter maybe he'll He'll, he'll come up big and give Flightline the race of his life in the Classic, but I'm not on the Life is Good at 10 Furlongs bandwagon right now, and, and there's still a chance that uh, uh, Life is Good can end up in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. We'll see. I think he'll probably be in the Classic for the big test, though. Uh, to tell you the truth, I think Taiba or Epicenter, Epicenter being the three-year-old champion in my eyes and Taiba being a horse who's looking better and better, might be bigger threats to Flightline in this Breeders' Cup Classic. But anyway, there it is, 14 races we went through, Matt Shipman. Well done on your part 
our top most likely winners for each of the races. Matt and I were in agreement on a bunch. We were in disagreement on a bunch. Hopefully this helps you as you start talking Breeders' Cup, maybe get some early wagers in even on the Breeders' Cup, which is now just about three weeks away, Matt. I'm excited for the Breeders' Cup here at Keeneland. It's only about 45 minutes away from my house, so uh, looking forward to a great Breeders' Cup. Can I get a parting shot from you, my friend? Yeah, I hope this, uh, Horse Center fans, I hope this gives you some things to start thinking about as the fields will start shaping up a little bit more. Uh, as we mentioned, I think pre-entries are due uh, this coming Monday, and then we'll come out a little bit uh, later in the week on Wednesday, uh, uh, probably. We'll be back next week. We'll be back with plenty of Breeders' Cup talk. Uh, and as always, I want to thank all of you for watching the show. Thanks, Matt. And yeah, thanks to all the viewers for watching. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button here at HRN on our, our YouTube channel. Go ahead and do that now. Turn on those notifications. We want to be uh, with you all the way through the Breeders' Cup and beyond. Thanks to Candace Curtis for the race graphics, although there were no race graphics this week. Thanks to Matt <laughs> Schiffman for the Breeders' Cup, most likely winner's graphics. Thanks to our sponsor, Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. Folks, as Matt alluded to, we'll be back with Breeders' Cup, Breeders' Cup, Breeders' Cup the next few weeks. We hope to see you there. We will see you there. Thanks for watching another edition of Horse Center, everyone. Have a good week.